This is Ms. Monson from Shady Rook, and this video is about strip diagrams, what they are, and how we use them to solve addition and subtraction problems. Strip diagrams can take slightly different forms, but there are a few important things that are always the same. Strip diagrams allow you to see the parts and the whole that exist in a problem. Typically, the bottom strip will be the parts, while the top represents the whole. These strips are equal because when you put the parts together, they always equal the whole or total. Let's look at an example. If Billy has five red cars and seven blue cars, then we can use a strip diagram to find out how many cars he has altogether. The whole is his total number of cars. The pieces are red cars and blue cars. We can combine the pieces, the red and blue cars, to equal the total number of cars. Here's another example. If Sarah has five green rocks and four gray rocks, then we can use a strip diagram to find out how many rocks there are in all. The whole here is her total number of rocks. The parts are green rocks and gray rocks. Because the pieces equal the whole, we know we can combine the green rocks and gray rocks to find the total number of rocks. Now let's see how we can use the same type of strip diagram to solve a different type of problem. If Jose has 13 baseball cards and five of them are Texas Rangers, then the 13 cards are his total, and the 5 rangers are a part of the total. They're part of the 13 baseball cards he has. This time, we have a number on the total bar and a number for one piece, but we don't know how big the other piece is. If we start with our total and separate the piece we know, what we're left with is all of Jose's baseball cards that are not Texas Rangers. So we've just used a strip diagram to show subtraction. Here's another example. If Bethany had 14 Pokemon cards and she lost six of them, then the 14 cards were her total, and the six that she lost were part of the total. If we want to know how many Pokemon cards she still has, we can separate the six that were part of the total and find out that she still has eight Pokemon cards. By third grade, your child should be comfortable solving addition and subtraction problems like these. Strip diagrams can still be used to model more complex problems, like those that we'll see in third grade. Let's take a look at one of those. In third grade, we solve a lot of multi-step problems. Sometimes you have to add and subtract. Sometimes you have to add and then add again. We can show this with a strip diagram. If Rose has 21 cupcakes, and Claudia has 15 cupcakes, and Reggie has 18 cupcakes, we can find out how many they have all together. We're looking for a total, but remember that the total bar will still be the same size as all the part strips together. So Rose's cupcakes and Claudia's cupcakes and Reggie's cupcakes will be stacked side by side and be as long as the total cupcakes. Just like earlier, when we are looking for a total, we'll put all of our parts together. We can also use a strip diagram when a part is missing. If there were 43 candy bars, and 16 went to George, and 13 went to Fred, we can find out how many candy bars Ron got. Every boy's candy bars are part of the 43, so we put them on our parts strip. We're going to do some subtracting to find the missing part, but there are different ways to solve it. We can add George's and Fred's candy bars and take those 29 away from the 43. We know that any candy bars that are left belong to Ron. Or we can take George's 16 bars away from the total, and then follow up by taking Fred's 13 bars away from the answer we just got. Once again, the candy bars we are left with belong to Ron. Now, sometimes we have a problem that doesn't have parts and holes. For example, if Martin has 18 toy boats and Sophia has 13 toy boats, and we want to know how many more boats Martin has. Sophia's 13 boats are not part of Martin's 18, and we're not trying to find the total number of boats they have together. We're not going to combine them. We can't separate them because they were never together. What we're going to do is compare them. A comparison strip diagram has no total bar, but it does have two strips. For this problem, we'll label one strip Martin and the other Sophia. Now Martin's strip is bigger because he has more boats, 18 to Sophia's 13. What we're trying to find out is this part, the number that Martin has that Sophia doesn't. To find that, we'll subtract. In a comparison problem, we can be looking for different parts. If Juliana has 15 M&Ms, and Valerie has four fewer M&Ms than Juliana, we can find out how many Valerie has. We have Juliana's strip and Valerie's strip. Valerie's strip is shorter because she has fewer M&Ms. 
We don't know how many she has, but we know that this part is four, and Juliana has fifteen. If we take away those four that Valerie doesn't have, we'll know that she has eleven. One last strip diagram for this video. I don't know that I've actually seen a problem like this, but it's a possibility. If Lucas has seven apples, and Sebastian has five more apples than Lucas, we're still comparing. We're not combining Lucas's and Sebastian's apples. Sebastian's strip is longer, but we're not sure how big it is. Lucas's strip has seven apples, and Sebastian's will be five more than Lucas's. This time, we'll add the seven that Lucas and Sebastian both have, because for Sebastian to have more, he has to have at least seven, and the five more that Sebastian has, so Sebastian has twelve. Most comparison problems are subtraction, and we use comparing when we don't have parts and wholes. Strip diagrams are flexible and are simply a way to show your thinking as you solve a problem. When a student can use a strip diagram to model a problem, the strip diagram can also help them decide which operation to use. To finish learning about all of the ways strip diagrams are used, make sure you watch the video about strip diagrams for multiplying and dividing. This is Ms. Monson, and this video is all about using strip diagrams when you're adding and subtracting.